Hi, welcome to SEO Hangouts with Josh Bachinski. That's me. Today I have a very exciting SEO Hangout for you. It's a complete uh, retrospective of 2016. All the biggest leaks from Google and biggest experiments, biggest SEO wows I came across in 2016 that are still relevant and moving forward to 2017. In fact, I'm gonna open up my black box of SEO secrets. I'm actually gonna show you the text and so you get to see a bit of my SEO notes and how I work and how I operate. And so I hope this will be really exciting and interesting for you. So without further ado, let's take a look at the best SEO leaks of 2016 that are still relevant moving forward to 2017. Folks, so I'm going to get right to it because there's going to be a lot of leaks here uh, that uh, have been quite important in 2016 and even moving on to 2017. And I use a star rating system in my notes. And I'm actually going to give you a sneak peek of what my notes actually look like. Um, so... Um, <laughs> so hopefully you won't see anything in there that, uh, you know, I've written for myself that is rude or something, but, uh, uh, or that I have uh, friends' names in there. Hopefully I'll delete those. If you see anything like that that I shouldn't have in here, please email me and let me know after you write it down and make use of it yourself, of course, <laughs> and then email me and let me know. But anyway, so the first, uh, I, searched, I searched for seven stars. There was no seven star items. The first six star item, which I guess I think is very important, six times as important as normal as this one is the mobile first index. Now this was from the Hangout uh, December 27th. This was just very recent, late in the year. And at first I didn't think the mobile first index was gonna be a big deal because it doesn't make any sense. Google already can parse the desktop uh, design. They show it to you in Search Console. And so I thought, oh, okay, no big deal. They're just gonna start uh, reading the mobile version of the site. And then what they're going to do is they're gonna parse it for the desktop version for any desktop uh, ranking uh, issues and so the, the the ranking shouldn't change at all, but this is not what John Mueller is telling me um, Now it's still very early and things might change as he admitted it was a uh, more than a few months off But the mobile first index as you can see here I asked him and I was actually on, on this hangout So this was my question. And I asked him so I know exactly what he meant because I was there in the conversation So I asked will desktop sites be ranked on mobile site quality. He said yes He said basically it's just switching like all the ranking algorithms they have now that process design, process quality, process where they're clicking is going. This, this is all my interpretation and, and my knowledge of what I know is going on. Of course, John Mueller doesn't admit all this stuff on air. Not, not so, not, uh, not, as, not as sweetly as that. Of course, he does drop little hints here and there over the years as he has to me and to multiple others. But so basically for the mobile first index, this just they're just changing it from how the desktop ranks right now with all the clicks they're tracking, the design they're tracking, the interstitials that pop up, the too many ads above the fold, all the links pointing to your de your desktop site, which may or may not be the same as your mobile site. I'll get to that in a second. All all the social references to your desktop site, all of the all the, the the other people out there buzzing about you, talking about you on your for your desktop URL, which may or may not be the same as your mobile URL. That's all switching to the mobile URL. So just let that hit you for a second. Just, just think about what that means. So if you've gone and you did an early mobile implementation, you have, instead of whatever.com, you have m.whatever.com, this is gonna be a huge problem for you. So now I see kind of what the issue is. is for anyone who has responsive design, as long as you have a good mobile design, then you probably won't see any ranking changes. But if you have a terrible mobile design, and or especially if your mobile design is on m.whatever.com, you need to change that immediately. Now, you still have a few months at least. He wouldn't even give a date. He said it's going to be a few months. That could mean one month. That could mean six months, right? So let's just say three, just to be safe. But keep in mind, that's just a complete guess, and, and it, it could change at any time. So let's say you have roughly a couple months to change your m.whatever.com to a responsive design on your main URL. Because if everybody out there is linking to and talking about and socialing and viraling on your desktop URL, your mobile URL doesn't have any of those signals, right? And if your desktop quality is fine and the desktop user interface is fine, you don't have too many ads above the fold, you don't have interstitials, and people are clicking where they're supposed to, they're converting, you've got to do the exact same thing. You've got to do just as good, if not better, on your mobile design as well. Because apparently, they're gonna be ranking you on your mobile, how well your mobile design does. They'll be ranking the desktop site how well your mobile site does now. Just like right now, they're ranking your mobile site how well your desktop site does. This is how John Mueller is talking about it. And, and so, 
At first I thought, yeah, no big deal, mobile first index. I didn't even put it in my 2017 video because I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But now information is coming out that actually this is, this is a rare thing that Google makes such a big, huge change. This is like the 2013 change for Hummingbird. This is like the 2012 change for Penguin. This is like the 2000, it's bigger than the 2012. Well, potentially, it, it would mostly affect, the, the reason why it's gonna be so big is because everyone, I, I do hundreds of audits a year, and 98% of the time, everyone's mobile uh, design sucks. It sucks. And they're, they, they, they have a way high bounce rate, they have less people going to pages, and uh, people, people spend less time. And their mobile speed sucks too. And so let me just go through everything that we, you can probably have been reading it while I've been talking. But so I asked, will desktop sites be ranked on mobile site quality? Yes, it's just switching. However it works now, they're just switching it around. And all they gotta do on their end is just make the Googlebot uh, user agent report as a mobile user agent, and your web server will give them a mobile version of the site. You might be able to do some jiggery pokery, and if Googlebot comes with a mobile user agent, you could tell the web server to give them a desktop version of the site. You could do that, but it might be easier and better just to change to a, a mobile design. It depends. And I said, will mobile site speed affect desktop ranking? He said, not yet, but eventually. He said, eventually. Point blank, yes. He said, right now we don't have a mobile site speed, like just if it's three seconds too slow, demote. They do, of course, track user interactions, and so it will already affect, slow mobile site speed will already affect your ranking, but not directly, indirectly, because user clicks will be worse. Um, but, so, but, he said, but he said, even eventually, they will get a mobile site speed, uh, period. That, that'll just happen. And they, he already admitted that desktop speed was a ranking issue as well. And then I said, will Google continue to ignore CSS hidden content in the mobile first index? He said, no, we're going to parse the entire page. So this is an, another fairly large change as well. So if you're hiding content in the tabs, which previously they ignored, and that was fine, it was not a problem. Now they're parsing the entire page. And he said, we're really good at determining what the main content of that page is, but we're gonna be reading the entire page now, so we might think your content's slightly different, we might think your keyword optimization is slightly different, either, either a little bit better or maybe even too high now, maybe your keyword density will be too rich now that they're including all of that CSS hidden content. And he also mentioned that at e-commerce sites, you definitely want to have, it's a liability, uh, let me see, I even wrote it down here. It's a liability if you do not have, uh, uh, because you can't hide that content anymore, now you have to have unique content. It's a liability not to have unique content, even on e-commerce sites that have boilerplate product content. So this is another big change as well. So again, this is really early and Google might realize how dumb they're being here and how, how, how ridiculously hard they're making it for people, but realize that this is a huge change. If, if this, what John Mueller is telling me, and he's telling me this point blank, if what he's saying here is true, which it could change, but if what he's saying here is true, and he's pretty sure, like he's pretty confident in what he's saying here, that you're gonna have to rewrite any, any duplicate content or it will be a liability. Maybe they have 5% liability, a 10% liability, a 20% liability. You know, like there's, there's other more important SEO things to do, but it's gonna be one of them. It's gonna be in the top 10 for sure like eight or nine, depending on the site, maybe, maybe, maybe higher. If you have nothing but duplicate content on your site, well then that's like a number one problem for you. Uh, and so that's a largely, it's all in part of possibly because uh, of, the, of the mobile first index that they're doing. So then he says, no, we parse the entire page. Hey, highlight, here we go. It says we parse the entire page. Uh, yes, unique content is better. It's not required, as I said. I said, will Google maintain different entities for the desktop site versus the mobile site? Will that now be defined by the mobile condition of the site? And they said, uh, yes, we're parsing entities from the entire page. There will be no separate entities for desktop. And I asked that on purpose because I wanted to see, because if he entered, yes, there'll be a separate entity for the desktop and a separate entity for the mobile, then that would mean that, yes, they're going to rank desktop as they have already been. And so that was my secret. See, see how you have to, have to ask John Mueller questions? That was my secret way of asking him, are you going to rank desktop on desktop signals? So it doesn't really matter. Uh, but he said, no, there's going to be one entity. We're going to parse all the entities we find on a page by parsing the entire page. Forget the uh, hidden content. We're reading the entire thing now. Uh, and parsing the entity and making the, the, the ranking entity based on everything we see there. On, when, we, when we ask for the mobile version of the page. 
And I said, are you going to raise desktop sites on desktop design or mobile design? Because they can parse out the, the desktop design. He said the mobile design. So this is pretty crazy, guys, if this is the way it works. That's why I gave it a six stars. <laughs> Obviously, I thought this was important. Um, if this is the way it's going to work, then that means uh, everything they're doing now for, for processing the desktop design, they're switching it to the mobile. So again, this is a few months off. So again, I will say you have a few months. If you're doing responsive design right now, all you need to worry about is, am I hiding any content that Google's suddenly going to see? Is that going to boost my keyword optimization too high? One. Two, how's my uh, user clicks on mobile? Do the users like it on mobile? Is it too slow? Is it ugly? Is it is it a bad design? Got to fix that. Three, if you got m.whatever.com, you, you definitely have to fix that because that's not going to have any links pointing to it. That's not going to have any buzz pointing to it. It's not going to have any social pointing to it. That's not going to have... Uh, you could very well also have terrible user interface and, and design and user clicks on that. And, and uh, it's going to have a completely different uh, directory structure. It could have a different page structure. Your rankings will change entirely and completely, probably for the worse. So if you have an m.whatever.com mobile implementation, you've got to go responsive right away. And I would strongly suggest making it um, either delete that version and just run off your desktop as soon as possible. And then build yourself a good mobile design that people like, that's fast, that's good. Now, what about AMP? He also, just because this is not as important, but I'll just add it in here because I'm talking about mobile. He said, yeah, you can go straight to AMP uh, for mobile. And yes, the, the speed benefits and all those benefits will be for, for the desktop. But, but remember, they like, uh, you know, AMP has a really different uh, design structure than, than regular desktops. So if you have like a blog or something, then you could go AMP for mobile and it wouldn't make that much of a difference because it's not an e-commerce site. You don't have to track conversions in that sense. Just do they read it? Do they like it? Do they leave? Yes. AMP is super fast. And so it is very convenient. Users do like it. And you can make it like the BBC has an AMP site. You know, you can look at these major AMP sites. Do a, do a, a search for major news and, and go to the AMP. You can see, okay, the BBC site looks kind of normal on our, on our mobile. So you can, have the, you can have the logo at the top. You can have images. Make sure you have images on your on your uh, your your article pages, they like images, as long as the image doesn't take away from the content or, or from people reading it. You can go AMP on mobile, and it might be a good idea to do because it doesn't look like they're gonna back off. I was hoping AMP would die because it's ter ethically it's terrible, politically it's terrible, but in terms of rankings, for you guys who don't care about that stuff, you just care about ranking in Google, then you might wanna go AMP for your mobile as well. I'm gonna have uh, some better hangouts on that in the future. Okay, so let's look at, that's all of the uh, six star, let's look at Five star. Okay. Well, look at that. <laughs> so the, this is a, from an AMP Hangout sometime in 2016. So they still claim they are not using AMP as a ranking factor, but in terms of ranking factors for AMP, then they fully accidentally, this was Paul Baucus, probably the Paul Baucus Hangout, they accidentally admit that the user signals like speed, click-through rate, internal click-through rate, and time on page, and AMP has all of that. And then he backtracks, he says, oh, that's not a ranking factor per se. So he fully admit that these things are ranking factors, user signals like speed, Click through, it's the, their SERP CTR, the internal click-through rate, your internal bounce. If people are bouncing around and not finding what they want, they track that, guys. They can track that through the Safe Browse feature. They control the malware Safe Browse database. And the time on page and probably returning users and things like that. And AMP boosts all that tremendously because it's so fast. Like it loads, boom, like that. Click, boom, it's there. It's so fast. It's on Google servers, right? So again, that's another reason why you might want to do it. Okay. All right, here I got December 22nd, 2016. He said that synonyms have equal weight. Um, if a direct synonym, they are treated equally. So I would use direct synonyms to avoid keyword stuffing. So, you know, weird, weird Xmas gifts is the same as strange Christmas gifts is the same as, as weird Christmas presents. It's all the same to Google. I thought it would be like a 95 to 99% relation, but, but John Mueller said, no, direct synonyms are 100% one-to-one correlation with that word. So this is great. You, you can avoid keyword stuffing and you can avoid it sounding jilted and you can hit other exact match queries by having uh, good synonyms in there. So you're, you should use a synonym in the title, a synonym in the, in the URL. The title and URL could probably be the same, but you can use synonym in the, in the H1 and it's synonyms in the, in the content as well and synonyms in your links. So that way you avoid the, peng the penguin monster by having synonyms in your links. So all your links shouldn't be weird Xmas gifts. It should be strange Christmas presents. Great site for uh, for weird Christmas presents. Great site for strange Xmas gifts. And all the synonyms are exactly the same. You're, so you're still maximally optimizing without over-optimizing. And that's exactly, that's, that's, 
that's the essence. That's the DAO of SEO right there. It's maximal optimizing without over-optimizing. Okay, I have another five-star one here. And John Mueller admitted that nofollow links are not an issue. The traffic from nofollow links, however, must find what they are looking for. So again, he, he tells you here. He, he's, he, he gives you hints. He just doesn't answer directly. Right? You can't go onto the Hangouts and say, John Mueller, is this a ranking factor? He has to say no, otherwise he'll get fired. But you can ask him subtle questions like you saw I did, and then he'll, then he'll, uh, he'll pay attention to that. So he says, nofollow links are not an issue, uh, so they're not going to hurt you. You don't have to disavow them or anything. In fact, I have experiments and I have some links to prove that nofollow links are, are used as a ranking factor. And they said, but he also used this as an opportunity to remind us that the traffic from nofollow links, however, must find what they're looking for. So again, you have to terminate the search. If they're looking for information, inform them. Above the fold, under three seconds. Make a, make a bulleted list is, is great for up at the top. Uh, too long, don't, didn't, don't read so they can get the information they want off the top. Don't make them read 500, 500 words if they don't want to read 500 words. Okay, let's see what else we got here. We got that one. Okay. Oh, here we are for the mobile first indexing again. I already talked about that. Okay, yes, they do penalize interstitials and pop-ups on mobile. So on all sites now that it is mobile first index, that's my question. So this is a recent leak. This is probably from two, uh, December or November. So here we go. Uh, so remember, they don't like pop-ups, they don't like interstitials. The only ones they will allow are religious interstitials or age verification interstitials. So you could try and fake something as a religious or a, 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 an age interstitial, but they're going to be pretty good at that. So I would just remove the interstitials and pop-ups, and I would do a pop under. I would do a, like a news ticker at the bottom. People always see a news ticker at the bottom, uh, and so you can have it on the site the entire time. Or you can do a pop on the right. And so users don't have to actually, as long as users don't actually have to click it or do anything with it, that's the best, because that's what annoys them. Because this could be a direct, it's either both a direct algorithm on mobile, that they, they just penalize you if you're interstitial, just, just static. And they also, remember, they're tracking the clicks. And users hate interstitials. And you're going to get click bleed. Every click a user has to make, you're going to lose like 5% conversions. Every second the user has to wait, you lose 7% conversions. That's a, that's a stat directly from Google, so I would trust it. Okay, let's go to the next one here. All right, December 27th, I was there. So links from news and blogs are fine, but it's better if it's more relevant. So somebody asked, if I have a site that sells sprockets, do I have to get links from sites that, that sell sprockets? The answer is yes. It's better if all your links come from sites that sell sprockets. But you don't have to do that, but it's definitely better. So definitely uh, links, and this includes no follow links, text mentions, and do follow links which I would try and get no follows and text mentions as opposed to do follow links because text mentions and no follows have no risk whatsoever. Do follow links do have a risk. Uh, if you over optimize or if they look like they're paid or bought for or placed, you can either get an algorithmic demotion or a manual demotion. So, but remember, wherever you get your, your mentions from, your text mentions, your no follow links, your do follow links, it really should be on a site dedicated to your topic. So really a competitor at that point. And Google does this on purpose because then it's harder to to, to get those kinds of links, to gain those kinds of links. It's very easy to go onto some blog site that writes about chiropractors and everything. Those links that are going to be ignored completely and are going to give you a Penguin 4 penalty. If you don't know what Penguin 4 is or how that works, look at my YouTube channel. I have, I've got lots of Penguin 4 videos there explaining in detail how the new Penguin works, Penguin 4 works. And my 2017 SEO video as well. Okay, let's do that again. Okay, so... I have something here that I've already covered. Uh, you see, I asked him, is there a trust? Uh, this is a, a, a hangout from a, earlier in the year. He doesn't know what is meant by trust, but he says that speed and availability are definitely taken into account when what the show. And then he says here, I would just remember that what is great for some users won't be great for some others. So this is telling us what is uh, low quality in Google's eyes. And are there sometimes on-page factors that are listed as low quality in Google system regardless of whether users love it or not? Um, I've asked him that recently, and they, there are, but they're, they're like the, above the, the, the ads, 50%, and interstitials, yes. Speed too high, yes. Uh, blocking uh, Googlebot, yes. There are static factors like that. Uh, blocking Googlebot from CSS, yes. Um, there are factors like that, but otherwise, it's mostly just uh, user clicks, guys, at this point. Okay, 
All right, so those are the ones that I saw. So let's go to number four, four here. Yes, so here's two of them. Yes, you need unique content, you want e-commerce sites, I mentioned that, and don't forget, deleting pages can reduce rankings. Try not to ever delete any pages, try to make them better. If you have any doubt as to whether, because some guy, this is from the December 27th hangout we just had. Some guy came on there and said, I'm, gonna I'm about to delete 3,000 pages, should I do it? And I was screaming, no, well, I can't jump into John Mueller's hangout. I'm like, I can't be like, no, don't do it. Can't contradict John Mueller in his own hangout. But, but I'm like, no, don't do that. Because one, domain size seems to make a difference. The amount of internal links you get makes a difference. And John Mueller said in a roundabout way, yes, deleting pages can reduce ranking. So don't delete any pages unless you're absolutely sure those pages are low quality and not helping you. Like they're thin, they're duplicated. They have, they have user-generated content on them, which, which are duplicated or spammy uh, or low quality. Uh, and even then, I would no index like 100 of those pages and see what happens. Or like if you want to delete 1,000 pages, no index, uh, you know, 1,000 pages, and then see what happens. If your rankings start to go down after a few weeks of doing it, or are still down, take away the no index and have it recrawled. And so Google will hopefully put you back right where you were because they'll think, oh, it was just a server error. And John Mueller has said this himself. If you want to test it out, no index like a section of pages and see what happens. Don't go deleting a huge amount of pages on your site because the number of pages is a ranking factor. And so you will be shooting yourself in the foot probably unless those pages are boat anchors and you know for a fact that they're, they're an issue. But even then, I would contact me to take a look. I would contact our, our SEO who knows what they're doing to take a look, a very careful one like myself. Not all whitehead SEOs are as careful, careful as I am. In fact, a lot of them just delete pages willy-nilly under the kind of philosophy, well, there was, it was spam, you shouldn't have had that anyway because it's kind of like an ethical thing. I wouldn't go with that kind of an SEO. I would go with a careful white hat SEO like myself, who also has a lot of black hat friends, and I can do black hat SEO just as well as well. I don't care. I'm, I'm results hat. I don't care. White hat, gray hat, polka dot hat. I don't care. I'm results hat. But I typically am white hat because I'm very risk averse, and I know what Google's talking about, and so I will never suggest a risky strategy for you. And if I do, I'll say, hey, this is really risky. I don't think you should do it. I think you should do it this other way. I'm kind of like a doctor in that regard. But I'm a doctor in the Canadian health system who gets paid either way. <laughs> Think of it that way. So, so I don't suggest any risky stuff just because you're going to pay me. I suggest, I suggest the safest stuff because that's the ethical thing to do, and that's how I maintain my reputation over the years. Okay, so we had a hangout March 21st, 2016 from Andre Lepatsev. I asked, how do you make sure that RankBrain likes our sites? And he said, read this. I'm not even kidding. He said that. I'm not even kidding. So this is Amit Singhal's uh, 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 original uh, you know, uh, article about quality sites. And um, it, it says Amit Singhal on it, but actually I know for a fact it was written by Matt Cutts because he admitted it to me that it was actually written by Matt Cutts. These are all uh, Google people of old. Anyone been in the industry for a few years knows these names. And these are the big guys who've made kind of Google who they are and what they are now. And this, these new people are kind of riding on these guys' coattails, so to speak. So again, so Andre Lepatsov here reminded me, remember, it's got to be high quality. I'm not even kidding. It's super important. John Mueller says it's super important. And, and the guys, the only way they can tell this is by reading a few on-page factors like I've been talking about. But in my 2016 kind of review here, I'm gonna, you're going to hear it again from me again and again and again. User clicks are what's important. And now what's important are user clicks on mobile moving forward for 2017. Okay, let's look at the next Four. Um, if you back off a of Chrome, do the load, load or slowness? Do you back off a of trust for that site? The answer here actually is yes. I don't know if he, if uh, this this person says it here, but John Mueller has mentioned that if they're crawling a site less, it can be due to quality. He said it can also be due to other factors, like your server load is high, that we've detected that, or you have a slow speed, which is also a quality problem anyway. Uh, but it does mean that you could have a quality issue. So if you're not ranking very well. Go into your search console and look at your crawl rate. And if your crawl rate is not at your lowest point, is not at least 10% of your highest, there's an issue. Because I do hundreds of audits a year, and I, this is kind of my, my, my golden rule, my kind of number that I've, I've, I've sussed out from doing hundreds of audits a year, that, hey, these low-quality sites, they don't get a crawl. If your crawl rate on the low side is zero, well, that means that you probably have some speed and some load low time and or some quality issues and or your... your you don't have any fresh content. And fresh content is also a static ranking factor as well. Freshness can beat links in some cases, guys, if the person is looking for fresh content. And quite frankly, unless you have a site about history, history 
historical information. And even then, new studies come out, new, new, new theories come out. Everything should have freshness. Every page should be updated at least once a year. I would say like once a month, even if you're just doing it programmatically uh, and switching out blocks of content and, and, and certain content on that page so that the Google bot comes back and see there's been legitimately a change of content and the dates change so it keeps crawling you on the, 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 the most, the freshest basis and you have any, any freshness factor for your rankings that's going to happen, you'll get it there. Okay. All right. Here's a really interesting that uh, uh, you're not going to get that because <laughs> uh, this is a private group I'm on. But but you see that I'm on that group. Uh, you know, I see, I told you, I'm friends with black hats. I talk with lots of black hats. I know what's going on in both the white hat world and the black hat world. So I know what to do and what not to do and when to do it and when not to do it. Probably better than any other SEO out there because most other white hat SEOs, for the most part, they don't talk to black hats. But I do because, you know, I'm a friendly kind of guy and I like chatting with people. And, you know, with my, with my academic background in philosophy, the first thing you do is you read one philosopher, the next thing you do is read the person who disagrees with him the most. And then somewhere in the middle is the truth. Uh, you know, and you make up your own mind. So, you know, uh, just an aside, so say Hume hated Plato, I would read Plato, and then I would go read Hume, and then I'd see, you know, these really deep philosophers, and then really hard to understand, and then I would figure out in the middle where the truth was. Uh, and maybe sometimes Plato got it right, maybe sometimes Hume got it right. I was academically trained for that. I, I was doing my PhD in that. So I'm very good at, I'm very good at doing it for, for black hat people and white hat people and respecting their positions and understanding their positions and looking at it from their perspective. Anyway, that's just an aside, guys. Sorry. So back to my 2016 um, uh, review. So for ranking a page, here's something very interesting that John Mueller said. It is very rare that we roll back algorithms. So basically, rollbacks do not happen. Basically, he admitted that rollbacks don't happen, guys. So anytime you have Barry Schwartz, God bless his soul, you know, I love the guy, but anytime he is saying something like, oh, Google must have rolled it back, or someone on his forum is saying, oh, Google must have rolled it back, they don't roll it back. Rollbacks basically don't happen, John Mueller said. So that means you're hitting different data centers, or you're hitting A-B testing as part of the algorithm. Right? Just, just consider that for a minute. Like, when they roll something out, you think, oh, they're rolling it back because I'm seeing it go back. No, no, it's not. You're just hitting different data centers. They're pushing out an update. They might push out an update to the algorithm, which is not necessarily a rollback. Rollback means they remove it entirely. So you could be hitting every different data centers, or remember, A-B testing could be part of the algorithm. Or if you're bouncing in and out of rankings, that's just a standard symptom of quality problems that John Mueller has already leaked and I've already seen a hundred times. So if you're dancing on page one and page three, page one, page three, that's a classic quality trust problem that John Mueller directly said to me in 2016. Let's see if I can find it here in my, my stocks. So you should get an SEO who knows what they're doing to give you a, uh, an audit to figure out why Google has got uh, quality problems with your site. Okay, the next one here is regarding linking. Should I 301 an old Penguin site to the new site given that Penguin does not demote anymore? What a question. John Mueller says no. It's not just Penguin. He said there could be manual actions and he did not say this, but he implied that there could be manual actions going on, even though that the guy said in Search Console there's no manual actions. So that's my bracket saying not reported. And there may be other algorithms looking at it, that too. So he said point blank is just better to let the site die. Okay, so this is screwy. So this guy just had a, an old penguin site that's not been ranking very well, a legacy penguin site, which all of them are supposed to be removed, by the way. It's supposed to be ranking fine. Who knows what he's done to it? He could have deleted a bunch of links. He could have disavowed a bunch of links. So basically, he shot huge holes in his linking profile with a shotgun. And he's saying, well, what is a wreck? Well, because you shot it with a shotgun <laughs> four times. You know, and so John Mueller is saying, you'll never know. This is read between the lines here. This is what John Mueller is saying. He's saying, you'll never know what was going, going on for over the years. And he's also admitting that there could be unreported manual actions and unreported algorithms that you can never get rid of. And I know a number of people like this for a fact. Some of them got their sites back after bugging John Mueller for years. And I mean years. Some of them have never gotten their sites back. Some of these people are, a number of these people are actually in my documentary that I made about Google, which by the way is coming out. I'm still trying to sell it. Uh, if I can't sell it in the next couple of months to a major distributor, get it on Netflix or Hulu or something like that. If I can't sell it to a major distributor in the next couple of months, I will release it myself. So don't worry. 
that documentary is coming out. You, you better damn believe that that documentary is coming out and the world is going to see it. And there's lots of inter interesting and, and just mind-blowing information about Google in there. It's a very high production quality. I worked with very, uh, very well, well-renowned uh, movie makers and filmmakers who've, who've won many, many awards at Sundance and things like that. So it's, it's a good movie, guys. Uh, if you want to see, get a sneak peek, it might be possible. I'm just the reason why it's taking so long is because this you know, making a movie takes a long time, and I'm trying to sell it to distributors. And so if I can't get it sold in the next couple of months now, so it's like say February, March, I will definitely release it myself. Uh, so don't worry, Google's not going to be changing their philosophies anytime soon. So it's still going to be relevant to show to your wives and your sisters and your mom and dad about what the heck you've been dealing with, and about you know, what Google is all about, what's been going on. That's who I made it for so that my mom and dad would understand what the hell I do. <laughs> and so that's the level it's made for. And so it's great for the whole family. It's great for the whole family to see what Google is doing. So that's coming up. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, that's another aside. Back to my uh, 2016 review here. So remember, guys, there are legacy penalties that, that may not be reported. You need, and I can detect them. You need, I know, I, I recognize these filters right away. I've got a number of people like that. For doing this for years and so you need an SEO who knows what they're doing to do an audit to tell you if you've got a legacy filter or not. Um, I should just, should just, before I forget I should just mention now again you can always contact me at joshpashinsky at gmail.com you can follow me on Twitter uh, on, on Twitter at joshpashinsky and you can follow more see more videos like this with experiments more leaks where I'm getting a lot of stuff from the 2017 uh, SEO course at youtube.com slash jbashins. Oh and my new white hat versus black hat podcast which will be coming out more or less weekly, uh, where White Hats and Black Hats debate the merits of SEO and have a, a fun little debate. And so it's a really cool show to watch. So again, this proves they have permanent unannounced penalties on quality and spam, including the duplicate sites. John Miller said that'd be an issue as well. Just because they say P4 does not demote doesn't mean something doesn't. P4 can still demote, but again, John Miller is saying point blank, no, if you've been having ranking issues for years, just give up. Um, that's, you know, very interesting, disconcerting, and I could say a whole bunch of things about that, but I've said enough. All right, moving on. Oh, here he is. John Mueller admits that links will eventually be replaced, point blank, by user signals and AI. So my, my interpretation means their engineers are already doing it. When John Mueller says eventually this will happen, that means they are already doing it. And don't forget that Miley Oyi, another Google employee who's a great, great person for, le uh, for leaks, already said they have an, uh, they're moving from a mobile first a philosophy to an AI first philosophy in 2017. And then John Miller admits they are already doing it now by saying this, sometimes we show sites with lots of backlinks and sometimes with zero backlinks. Backlinks aren't the only way to show up in the search results. So they are already doing it. Rank brain is at 50% up from 33% in my opinion. You can look at my 2017 video for that. I think they're already doing this. Then he talks about AMP as a ranking factor. I already talked about that. Uh, talked about that, talked about that. Okay. He says, yes, page crawl is partially determined by quality. I talked about that. Okay, and he said, finding niches. Uh, so John Muir talked about finding niches. He said, here's the, and this is uh, kind of an SEO strategy that a lot of people know, but John Mueller, when John Mueller's talking about it, you know that it's a good SEO strategy. This was uh, early December, uh, late uh, November of 2016. He says, find where the content is weak for that search query. So that's very interesting. So you want to find out where your competitors there are not doing a good job. What you don't want to do is try and, and if you have if you have a choice, what you don't want to do is try and go rank in a uh, uh, in a niche where where the content is strong, where they've got great content in that that niche, right? It, it, depending on what you mean by content, but you got to be able to beat them. So you know it's not only how many links they have to their site. It's not only you know. Uh, how big their site is, it's how, what's the quality of their site? Do they have a crap site? Guess how well they're converting. Like look at their site and try and use it and say, boy, this sucks, I have to click three times, I can do a better job than this. Or man, their, their, their content on this is weak, you know, the, it's, it's got misspellings, it's, it's terrible, these people don't know what they're talking about, I can write a much better article on this. That's where you wanna try and rank. That is how you do niche research. It's so much less about links these days and outer signals, although that still matters. But it equally as important is are they converting and how what's the quality of their content? Because guys, I have already ranked sites for years with no links. Other people I know in the black hat niches rank sites with no links uh, or very little links, very few. 
Um, uh, I, I know guys who are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not bragging. I'm. I'm. I, I mean this. This is not hyperbole. I mean this flatly. I know people who are making hundreds of thousands of dollars per month, and they only have like one or two or three links pointing to their site. But because they got really good links from sites dedicated to that niche, uh, uh, on the index page, with with pretty decent anchor tags. You know, so you don't need a lot of links in most cases. You know, and if you don't have if you don't have task completion, if you don't have conversions better than everybody else, and speed and user quality better than everybody, and clicks as, as measured by your clicks better than everybody else, it doesn't matter how many links you got. You're not going to rank that well anyway. Okay, I can show you how to do all this, guys. Guys, you can still make hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. It's just it's really hard. <laughs> it's really really hard. You really have to know what you're doing. You really have to be up on all these new algorithms that Google is doing. You can't just buy the old same old PBN stuff. You know, people are succeeding on that, but it's less and less people. And and I ask, oh well, how's your your quality? Oh, your quality is really important too. So they say they say to me, well, all you need are PBNs to rank. And I say, how's your quality? Oh, quality is important. You need your quality too. Okay, well then, <laughs> then it's a combination. You know, you know, it's it's it it you, when you just start drilling down what these people's secrets are. You know, we start to see that we're all on the same page for people. People who are succeeding are all on the same page, whether we call it the same thing or not. Okay, did that one. Okay, so here, John, 20, December 27th, I was there. He basically admits user experience is ranking factor. Pretty much point blank. and says content is more important. Doesn't even mention links. He's asked what are the, base, the big ranking factors for next year. He doesn't even mention links. He doesn't even say it. He says it's on-site quality. Uh, not, not the page basis. So your site has a quality score based on how well it converts overall. So remember, for Panda and RankBrain, which is the same thing, the site, uh, your, your quality score, that's what it's called internally in Google in their patent, the quality score. The quality score is the new page rank. Your quality score is on your site based for overall how well your site converts as compared to everybody else. It's a score like uh, one to 10, just like page rank, right? So you, you have a quality score of eight, everyone else has a quality score of five, then you're gonna be ranking better than them uh, unless you have no links and they all have a bunch of links and, and Google thinks links is an important factor in this niche or social. You know, like no one's searching you out uh, in Google and clicking on your name. No one's searching for your brand name. You know, you need all these different factors. Guys, I'm opening up Pandora's box for you completely in this 2016 review. If you're listening very closely to what I'm saying, you're getting a complete SEO Bible of how to rank. And that's because that's what I do. I like to share this information. Now, if you need any help, just email me and I'd be happy to help. That's what I do for a living. Okay, then John Mueller also says, we can tell what is rewritten in Spun. They like unique content, uh, but you gotta look at the bigger picture. So again, you know, the more duplicate content you have on your site, the more it's gonna be a ranking factor for you. If you have like your, your terms and conditions, that's not an issue. Like the boiler break content is not an issue, you know, uh, unless it's on your e-commerce pages. If you want your now, now if you come to me and say, Josh, I've got 10,000 product pages, I can't rewrite them all. Gotcha, I understand. But what's your 10, what's your top 100 products? Well, what are the top 100 products you sell that that you want to sell, that you make the best uh, commission on or you make the best uh, margins on? Let's rewrite those ones, right? The top 10, top 50, top 100. Do 10 a month if you need to. Rewrite those ones, and then you're going to see ranking improvements on those best products that you want to do. So it, it is a good it is a good idea. Okay, so direct John Mueller, this is early, John Mueller in 2016, John Mueller directly states that speed will become an increasing ranking factor for mobile, that if the page is too slow, they will treat it as non-mobile friendly. So again, this is early, see how it works? Early in 2016, they start warning us of stuff, and later, later in the year, they're like, yes, for sure, it's an issue. Uh, John Mueller admitted earlier in the year there are different data refresh schedules in all different parts of the core algorithm for different sub-algorithms. So PageRank updates and pushes to data centers daily. Panda is either monthly or weekly. John Mueller admits it depends on the data that is available and how we can process that. He opens up later on on the Hangout. Uh, I'll get to that. So he strongly, here's another issue that, that people don't realize. And, and, and this, this is about talks. Tax it sounds like he's from Boston. Talks there. Um, <laughs> so John Miller strongly implies there are problems with spammy exact match internal anchors, especially when added into the text. He says one, just put links in the navigation. They can tell what the page is about by reading the page. They don't need the extra uh, uh, hint anymore. And don't make it exact match with commercialized intent. Calls it cruft. 
pay very close attention to what he calls cruft. That's another one of his, his personal keywords for spam and for don't do this. He said, don't put links where users never scroll. And, and don't add keywords to any pages. So this one's a really important one, guys. In, it used to be a big deal, and I see it, you know, week after week, I get a, a site audit where they still have a blog where they're sticking in, you know, in the middle of the paragraph, they're sticking in exact match anchor text pointing to something internal on their site. Don't do that. That he has strongly implied again and again that it is keyword stuffing, that is a, that is an issue. You can put exact match as long as it's not highly commercialized. You can put exact match internal links in your navigation, but don't put them in your content. Uh, if you're going to put links internally in your content, which doesn't help you at all, there's no point in doing it unless you want to uh, boost the links to a certain page so that Google knows it's most important and that's what your site's about, right? The site that, that what you want to rank for is what should be getting the most internal links on your site. I repeat, what you want to rank for should be getting the most internal links on your site, but don't put exact match uh, links in your, in your content, only put your exact match links in your navigation. Okay, let's see what else here. Okay, so here we have one. Um, okay, so this is a, an earlier hangout. I know what was he was talking about here, so I'll just tell you. So in an earlier hangout, uh, a pretty young lady asked John Mueller, by the way, if you need information out of John Mueller, he, he, he likes the pretty young ladies, <laughs> like, like most heterosexual men, I guess. Uh, and he, he is a little, he's a little sweet on them. And as long as they don't ask him, you know, they can ask very blunt questions that no, no man or anybody else would ever get an answer for. But if you have a nice, charming young lady uh, in your workplace or you want to hire one to ask him questions, don't flirt with them too much. Just, just, a little, just, just be nice. Just be, just be nice. Don't, don't, don't put it on too thick. And he will give you way more information. I've seen it so many times. He will give you way more information than normal. So after this particular uh, nice-looking young lady asked him how fast does penguin uh, panda work, he he told he 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 opens up. And so he he mentions, and I know what this is about, so I'll just tell you. So for the for panda, the user-based panda, he said it could take a few months. He didn't say it was user-based. Now he admits it's user-based. At the time, he wouldn't admit it. He said for, uh, for Panda, for, for, for the longer core algorithm changes, it could take, you know, uh, it could be a, up to a quarter, three, four months, then maybe even six months for sites that don't get a lot of traffic. And then for all the static on-page stuff, it takes maybe a week. So for the crawl-based static algos, it could take a week and up to six months for the other signals, and that's he's talking about Panda Rank Brain in that case. So that was a very interesting leak early in the year. If you've been watching my Hangouts, you already would have heard that from me. So regarding hreflang, hreflang is a technology you put in the top of all of your HTML pages to tell Google that you have an English version of the site, French version, German version, all the different versions. It has to be the same on every page. And for example, if you want, he said, they admit the hreflang they see is on the same page. So that means if you want to rank better in all English speaking nations, for example, you could have an hreflang set up for each with their spelling and currency. It would cut through a slight percentage of motion for not being the preferred language variant. So that's a very interesting, oh, how do you spell prefer here? Preferred, <laughs> that's how you spell it, really? You ever look at an English word and think, that can't be how you spell it, but yeah, that's how you spell it, according to the word here. So anyway, um, so this is an interesting idea that I've never tested. So if you guys want to test this out, let me know how well it goes. Even if Google's already ranking you pretty well in say Canada or US, put an hreflang on your site that says, hey, we have, we're for English uh, US speakers or for English Canadian speakers. And they might give you a bit of a boost for it because that's kind of what he was talking about here and the idea I got when I was listening to him for this particular leak. And as you can see, this was very early in the year. So this is about almost a year ago. This is, early, this is January, 2016. He also admitted that they do use split testing with new sites and wait to see user reactions to it. And that your on-page specificity matters. It will rank the site higher and it will look better to them, and the URL architecture matters too. So you still need exact match keywords in your title and your, in, your, in your URL. Just don't have it too much all over your page because you don't want to go over the threshold for keyword stuffing. I know uh, some of my colleagues don't agree with keyword stuffing, and we're still testing it in, in my super secret black hat testing group. I will let you know when we get the results of those tests. Okay, already went through all those. Okay. Here's another really interesting one, and remember this, guys. It can take months to recover from a URL change. And in my opinion, it does, take, does not take that long to change the link targets in their 301 database. 
So remember, if you 301 something, it only takes two to three days. It only used to take two to three, two to three days when you, when you 301 an entire site. So remember, it takes months for them to recover from a URL change. Um, they need to crawl your entire site again to get the internal linking structure to determine if you have the proper silos. Um, the query deserves diversity algorithm needs to reprocess. On page semantic might need to reprocess as well. And remember, the quality score. They have conversion paths in the quality score in the 2012 patent. So they need to recalculate your quality score and your complete on-page semantic if you change your if your domain name and things like that. Um, if, if you 301 from redsprockets.com to something unrelated.com, that's going to make a difference. And anyway, they need to repro reprocess everything. They can't use your quality score from your previous site because your, your site might have changed in the meantime. So they need to crawl everything again, and then they need to watch the traffic for a few months again, and then they need to compute a new quality score for your site. To compare it to all the other sites in in the same niche or whatever new niche you're going to be in because you've changed your shard you've changed your shards you've changed your database entry with google when you changed your url so guys that's why i always say you never ever 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 want to change your url in any way shape or form if you care about your rankings because you can not only lose rankings for a few weeks or months you can lose rankings for a year or forever, permanently. You might have to do something different to get them back. Okay, next one. The Mueller states point blank that it's still very important to have your specific keywords you want to rank for on the page. And the Google can see it as your primary content and users can see it as well. That's still when they were hiding that content. Now, as long as it's on your page, anywhere on your page in the next few months, that's going to be perfectly fine. Uh, John Mueller says, want to see if we can see your JavaScript? Put it on a test page and then fetch and render. You will see it in the render view, but on the fetch view. Then Googlebot cannot see it. That's what John Mueller says, but um, I, there, there are actual SEOs who have tested this. It's getting hard here. I need to take off my sweater. Good thing there's not a video for you. <laughs> uh, John, there are actually SEOs who have tested this, and... Um, and they and they've tested like JavaScript pop-ups, JavaScript delay, JavaScript on scroll, JavaScript event handlers, things like that. And 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 Google could read it all. And so I don't know what's going on there. And remember, if they're just parsing the whole page in mobile and just reading the entire page, they're going to parse and read everything. So you know they can just still read the HTML and see what's going on. Uh, I don't know how that user tested it. He should have called the JavaScript from a separate file so Google uh, and blocked that file. So Google would only render that content if it rendered on page. That's what he should have done, and I don't think he actually did that on that test. That'd be the way to test it. That could be something for our testing group. And here again, uh, and later in the year, just before October 21st, he accidentally admitted there is a quality score, quote unquote. He said the word quality score, and then he was like, uh, all embarrassed uh, about what he said, about, about, about saying it, because he's not supposed to admit any of this terminology. Even the terminology is not supposed to admit. It is based on past actions, basically admits how it all works. It rolls, uh, it rolls on using past data. It says past data, that in my opinion is user actions, uh, which he's kind of hinted at and implied in, in many places and other ways, as I've said. And then they apply it and it changes periodically. Okay, October 21st. He says you can 404 of Penguin real time, but he was not sure. Canonical won't help. Uh, manual team will look at it. So I've talked about Penguin 4 already. Um, uh, there's no reason you'd want a 404 page. Basically, how you handle Pen Penguin 4, as I said in my 2017 video, is don't build links that Google will find as Penguin 4 links because essentially they're making a flag that bubbles up to the manual team. Basically, they're going to bubble up to the manual team to look at the whole picture. And this, I've already said this in my 2017 video and my previous Penguin 4 video, so I'm not going to take time on it. But basically, that's the way Penguin 4 is working now. They can't they can't algorithmically get rid of negative SEO, and so they're going to bubble it up to the, if you have enough Penguin 4 flagged links, they're going to bubble it up to the manual team, and manual teams going to be looking at it. So there's really no jiggery pokery to do. There's no no need no 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 need to use a canonical to, to forward the link juice, no need to use a 301, no need to 404 pages, um, there's no need to disavow. That's all just going to hurt your rankings, right? You don't want to hurt your rankings before your rankings need to be hurt. The way this is working is bubbling up the manual team. Just let them look at it and make their determination if you've been a naughty boy or if they think it's negative SEO. And then when you get the manual penalty, then you beg, uh, beg, borrow, steal, delete links, do all those things, 
Only after you get a diagnosis of cancer do you go and cut into healthy flesh. It's the same thing with the, if your links. Don't ever play with your links. Uh, anyway, don't disavow. Don't do anything like that. Do not disavow before getting a manual penalty. Okay, let's see what other little bits I have. Uh, oh, this might be a new one here. Fully admits rank brain is used to understand both the page and the query. What entities are on the page? And then so this means the way Google is talking about how rank brain works, if you think about it logically, they have to be using user clicks to complete that cycle. They don't know what the query means if they're not watching what you click. Right? Think about it. They don't know, rank brain doesn't know what it means. It's not, it's not a sentient being, it's an artificial intelligence. It doesn't know what weird Xmas gifts mean until you click on strange Christmas presents. And then it knows A, what that means, and B, those are things are synonyms. And it adjusts the entity database if enough people do it. Okay. Again, you can't just go buy links because the manual web team um, will be alerted and research what is going on. Uh, uh, so this is confirming my hypothesis is what, what they're doing. So this is a problem. Oh, here, here it is. I told you I would come to it. So here's this leak about overall quality. When a site is dancing and they're A-B testing it and keep it there, this is, an, uh, and I quote, an overall quality issue. John Mueller admitted about that. And what I said, what, is it a link? Is it a link problem? John Mueller said, and I quote, links don't fit in there. So it's a quality issue. And he says, our algos are not 100% certain how to handle that page because it's a quality issue. So it's not your links, guys. It's the quality. And I've been saying this for years. If you're just, if you're just tuning in now, I've been saying this for years, and that's a, that's a huge issue, guys. And this, is a late, this is late 2016. This is November because you can see the, the date of the next one there. Okay. Great. So here's an issue, another issue I want to mention. So keywords and URL can be an issue, especially if not high quality, too. So especially if there's multiple keywords. So you don't want to look like this. This is what you don't want to look at. You want to use your exact match query. It has to be once in this URL here somewhere. But you, if you want to rank for red apples, you don't want to have a URL like this. Uh, that will be an issue. And John Miller also mentioned they look at the page overall, including the comments. OK, let's see if we've gone through all the number three stars. Three stars, don't change URL structure. Yeah, I talked about that. Oh, he, he inadvertently admitted that social shares and recommendations do help rankings. This is funny when he did that. He inadvertently admitted that. It was quite quite hilarious. Um, he does say, we don't care about structured data per se. Uh, oh, no, sorry. This is a, they don't care about valid HTML. So. They've been, they put in their uh, webmaster guidelines you should have valid HTML, and they don't care. It, valid HTML is not a ranking factor, but structured data is a ranking factor, and they can't read your structured data properly if you don't have valid HTML. So that is the issue. So when he asked point blank, of course he's going to deny that structured data and app is a ranking factor. But structured data is a ranking factor. He has admitted it before that it's a good idea to do. When people ask, what should I do for rankings? He said, well, structured data would be a good idea. You know, and, and it's always in the list of what he says to do. Make sure quality, structured data, things like that. So again, this is the reason why. They don't care about valid HTML per se, but valid HTML makes it easier to pick on the structured data. If you have broken HTML, they may not be able to read your structured data. All right, moving on. All right, here's another thing he said. Users definitely notice speed differences. So he strongly says it's a good thing to do and strongly implies it's a ranking factor. He says if it's under two to three seconds, that's fantastic. If you can go even faster, I'm pretty sure you will see significant changes in the way users engage with your content. And remember, that was a ranking question he was asked. They asked him a ranking question for that. And this is the answer he gives. So you've got to read between the lines of what he says. So when he says it's good for the user, it's usually a ranking factor. Uh, here's another good one. He says, outbound links are not a requirement for ranking, but then he says, but it's a good thing to do. So it's a ranking factor, right? Have an outbound link to authority sites in your niche. So if you are on Red Sprockets, have an outbound link, cite your sources, so to speak, and like citations, you know, uh, you know, outbound link to Wikipedia or something like that. Uh, put it lower down the page so you don't get click bleed so people are not clicking away or not annoyed. At least if they terminate the search, at least it's, that's fine. Okay, some loser comes on. Uh, I apologize if you're the person who asked this question. 
and asks, what is the best way of ranking? John Mueller rolls his eyes and then says, one, make all the technical steps fast, responsive. One, provide content offers people really want and come back to. He always mentions returning visitors. So this, I put a note for myself here. I've got to test this out in my testing group. He always mentions come back. Now that could just be because it's quality they come back, they search it and come back, and the searching the SERP we know is a ranking factor. Um, then he asked John Mueller if he should buy links or do it naturally. Again, John Mueller had a funny response. He's not gonna, he's not gonna respond to those point blank questions. That's people don't realize the game they're playing with with, with John Mueller. Okay, December 10th, December 8th. Okay, this is something I found out for you guys, which I thought was really good. Um, the the uh, title width on mobile is 607 pixels. It wraps. It's about 600 pixels on desktop. And remember, they're going to be using your mobile title to rank you. So more keywords in there probably means better rankings. Um, just don't go stuck in keywords in there. Okay, let's see. We got cover those, cover those, cover that, cover that. Uh, yes. Okay. Now we're going to go to the two stars. Oh, I'm going to cover go through a whole bunch of stuff that I covered. Maybe I should have thought of a better way to do this. <laughs> oh, here we go. Two stars. Okay. John Mueller accidentally mentions ranking signals for new pages. Users might see it on your very recognizable brand, might recommend it to others, might even buy it. So it's going to be a very recognizable brand that they might recommend to others, they might even buy. This was explicitly an answer to how do I get new products ranking. So when he was asked, how do I get new products ranking? He said it's got to be a very recognizable brand, so people searching you in the SERP. They might recommend it to others, so social buzzing about it, talking about you on forums and links, and they might even buy it, meaning they need to convert. If they don't convert, that's a problem. So point blank, you got it right there, what the issues are. Here's another one he says. He says, John Mueller admits that bad links can give you negative link juice. This is from 2015, actually. He admits that bad links can give you negative link juice. Those are my words. Aside from any manual penalty that you have even after manual pen is lifted, I don't think this is um, relevant anymore. I, it probably is still relevant. And this could be, see, here's, here's the problem. So I don't know if this is still relevant. So because Penguin 4 came out, this was a year ago. Now that Penguin 4 has come out, it, it, they don't talk about it giving you negative link juice. They've changed the, your, their, their speaking. But remember, there was that other leak he gave that said, well, there could be other, there, there could still be algorithmic demotions for links. Uh, you know, so, you know, it's just this beast behind the, the brushes that we can't see, but they keep hinting at and keep seeing the footprints of. So, uh, I don't know what that beast is called. Let's call it Cougar. <laughs> Let's call it Mountain Lion, because I live in uh, the Pacific Northwest. There's plenty of mountain lions. In fact, I found a mountain lion den the other day close to the golf course where, where I live. I can send you the pictures if you want to see what a mountain lion den looks like. Um, but, uh, and we have black bears up here too, actually. It's going for a hike. It's Fairly dangerous, <laughs> actually, where I go hiking. Uh, anyway, um, so he admits that bad links can give you negative link juice. Uh, that's definitely what he was he was intimating, is that bad links can give you uh, an issue, and not just aside from, aside from the manual penalty, and even after the manual penalty is lifted. So again, there could be negative linking trust algorithms that are like, we don't trust you anymore, we still think that you have an issue. And I think this could still be relevant because we still see signs of it in 2016 moving on to 2017. Um, no, did that. He reminds us that URL parameters are a crawling, indexing, and potentially a ranking issue. So remember, guys, this is from uh, about a year ago as well. Um, URL parameters are a crawling, indexing, and potentially a ranking issue. A URL parameter is like this when you have whatever.com slash question mark variable equals something like that. That's what a URL parameter is, the question mark, and the variable, uh, that's the parameter, a parameter equals something. And um, if that if that says something like, hey, come back in. Oh, all right. Come back, there we go. If this, if, if this says something like um, uh, uh, red apples equals red apples, that could be an issue because one, you're keyword stuffing now. You got two instances of red apples. Or if this is something like Viagra equals yes, <laughs> that could be an issue as well. So if people are building links to your site that say Viagra in them and they build 20,000 links making 20,000 imaginary pages that respond 200 so Google thinks they're real pages, 
even though it's it's supposed to be a 404 page on your side, it responds 200, then they think you have Viagra on your site, I guarantee to you this is an issue. So remember, this is a crawling issue. If you have too many, they won't crawl. You'll eat up your crawl budget. It's an indexing issue. If they see too much duplicate content, they won't index you right and they start detrusting your site. And it could be a ranking issue if they see uh, duplicate or thin content or low quality there. So that's a huge negative SEO issue and it could be a ranking issue for you as well. So make sure you check your server and see what's going on. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can't figure it out, email me and I can check it for you and I can definitely help you with that. But I've seen sites de-ranked on that alone. That, that problem alone, I've seen sites de-ranked on. Okay, he admits that they're running Penguin experiments internally. Uh, so that was uh, earlier on. Uh, again, the Android of the Patsov, I've covered that in a different hangout. So I don't want to go over the whole thing again. I'm just going over the highlights. Again, Andrew the Pats have had another hangout. There's the URL for you. If you haven't watched it, you can watch it. You can watch my video on it. Uh, again, it's very, very important. Um, uh, they also admitted in this particular hangout here, John Mueller admitted, let's see, where was it? This hangout was March 11th here. That they'll analyze links to determine what links are valid. John Mueller directly admits they do a lot of this already. Uh, and John Mace, John Mueller's face told me this. They're using artificial intelligence to uh, to process the links. I mean, I don't think that anyone doubts that now these days. Rank Brain is used for Panda. Rank Brain is the core of Panda. Rank Brain is the core of Penguin Four. Um, yeah, the more focused he said, focalized. Um, uh, English is not his first language, but the more focused pages means you will get better traffic from search engines. Again. You definitely want your page, if you want to rank for very uh, for weird Xmas gifts, your page should be all about weird Xmas gifts and nothing else. And nothing else. And you can say strange Christmas presents, because it means the same thing. But it shouldn't be on anything else but weird Christmas presents. Strange Christmas presents. Uh, they crawl low-quality low pages left off, and I already talked about that. Um, will no-index pages rank back where they were? Gary Ilyich. So this is Gary Ilyich. Sorry, <laughs> I was getting blunt in my notes. Uh, Gary Ilyich is another Google employee. Uh, he asked if no index pages will rank back where they were. He says, it depends how long. If it had a few days, very likely the signals were still lingering around. If a few weeks or months, then no. So again, if you want to try that no index test, it's going to be a few days that I talked about. Uh, uh, he said there are other signals that don't stick around when the URL does not exist anymore, aka Fucking user clicks. <laughs> Sorry for the f bomb, but I mean clearly. I mean I, I get so annoyed with people who say, "Oh, you know, it's not, it's not, uh, it can't be user clicks. They can't see it. Of course they can see it. I can tell you exactly how they see it. I know exactly how they see it through the safe browse feature." John Mueller has basically admitted that to me in private uh, last year in 2015, uh, 2015 actually uh, a year and a month ago. Uh, that yes, through the safe browse feature, they can see what pages get clicked on, because they have to compare that URL to the database to, to say it's a malware page or not. And then they know the time between IP address, blah, 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 clicked here on this date, clicked here on this date, clicked here on this date. Gary Ilyish uh, submitted to us the, the, the screen they see of, of users clicking on, 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 on pages and how often they do it, because he was so cocky. So, uh, they're, guys, they're doing this. This is a major ranking factor moving forward. They're, they have AI first. What else do you think the AI is working on? <laughs> right? They already have the, 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 all the algorithms for links they need. So this is exactly what's going on here. Okay. Uh, sufficient keywords do boost rankings. So a photographer site with no keywords versus a page with keywords, more relevant, more context. So all your pages definitely need text, and your pages definitely need keywords. Uh, the geotargeting selector in Search Console does do something. So if you want to rank high for the U.S., make sure that um, uh, that you have in Search Console selected U.S. for your for your site. But but beware that'll lower your rankings for Australia, Canada, and the U.K. and everywhere else. HTTPS is page based, so you will see a boost on that page for ranking if you see any at all. Um, here's, uh, so I had somebody, a, a, a good thing I don't have his name written here so I can, I can save this with you. Uh, uh, he was tuning his content to one keyword per 200 words. 
that is exactly uh, how it worked for him. So that is my, my golden rule. One search phrase per 200 words is how I would do it. Any, any less will rank worse, any more will rank much worse. As you see here, he said that one came back, had 11 mentions of two-word query or 1,300 words, then I dropped it down to six, and it came back to ranking page two. So he over-optimized it. So, you, and so he was testing around in, in the bingo niche. You can over-optimize. Uh, John Mueller thought the previous penguins were released. I did that in a previous penguin video. Um, you do not want a combination of exact match domain and low quality content. I, I repeat, avoid an exact match domain. They already have us. They already have a strike against them. John Mueller has said this, and I've noticed this. An exact match domain already has a filter or a strike against them. And let's see if there's any left here. If you get a partial penalty against the manual links uh, that, that the that the site action versus links, again, there's no need to disavow. Uh, John Mueller fully admits it. John Mueller fully admitted point blank that if you get this, the uh, manual penalty versus links, there's no need to disavow, there's no need to do anything. Guys, don't touch the disavow at all until you talk to me. <laughs> Basically, that's what I can say. Don't touch the disavow at all until you get the manual action versus site. Okay, he wouldn't admit that having poor, poor loyalty versus poor links, was, which was worse. Therefore, both are important. Again, this is my sneaky way of asking him, what's important, uh, links or uh, quality? He wouldn't admit one is worse than the other, so they're both the same importance. Uh, uh, basically, this one here, theoretically, anything may become a navigational query. Examples was how to lose weight, proves they use rank brain, proves my theories of SEO, proves how uh, they're using AI for new queries. Uh, because how to lose weight can become a navigational query, to how, how you know someone who is so uh, such a good answer for this information query means they're definitely using rank brain you could definitely train the ai to change the entity database to say these guys are so authoritative on this information query that it becomes navigational and you just get these guys right away and the, the domain was not how to lose weight.com by the way it was some other domain it was a blog so and he said that yes theoretically anything may become a navigational query so that means it's open-ended, it's the AI, it has to be the AI. Rank Brain is training the entity database, watching what you search and where you click. Uh, if you guys, if it, I mean, that I've already talked about this, that, that should make sense what I'm saying, and, and you guys should have a light bulb going on saying, yep, you're right, Josh, it has to be AI-based, based on how it's working. If that doesn't make sense to you, because I'm trying to get through all this, if it doesn't make sense to you, email me, I'll explain. And then Joe Mueller admitted here, we take into account links, the rest of the web, the rest of the website. So this is the, my brackets as to what he means by that. No follow, do follow, text message, and social. He's mentioned all of these in different leaks in different places. And my testing shows all of these work. Brand searches, CTR in uh, Google, click-through rate, and the sort of bounce back. Uh, the rest of the website, technical, site schematic, schematic, and of course, the internal bounce rate, I didn't mention here, and the uh, conversion rate. Internal CTR and conversion. Which could very well just be tracked in terms of the SERP bounce rate, right? If they bounce, the bounce back to Google if they're not satisfied, but they can also track, and they are tracking whether you get a click on that final order page or not. Okay, let's see if there's any final ones here for you. Uh, yes, no follow links past juice. I have got some, uh, I've been saying this for years. I have, the people I know have experimental results to show it. Pretty good experimental results, and I've been getting no-follow links for clients for years and ranking them on it without any risk, I might add. What else do we have here? I think that could be it. And I should probably end my video here because that's probably enough stuff, long enough, and we've gone through the most important stuff. So that looks like it, folks. Yeah, there we go. So that's it, folks. Thanks very much for paying attention. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be having more videos come out. Again, if you have any questions, uh, email me at joshbashinsky at gmail.com. Follow me on Twitter at joshbashinsky. And you see more videos like this, including my new podcast, White Hat versus Black Hat, where we get the latest White Hat and Black Hat leaks and a little bit of friendly debate between the two. It's a nice humorous show. It's very fun, good to watch. And also more videos, more uh, SEO Hangout videos from me, uh, showing you all uh, my SEO leaks and experiments and things like that. So thanks for watching very much. And again, guys, as always, Good luck in the SERPs for 2017.